Pembroke. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to rise on behalf of my constituents in the food producing riding off Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke. Yeah. Now, normally Canadians would have to first elect a Conservative government before they could receive Canadian or Conservative legislation. After eight years, it's possible the gravity of the financial hole this Liberal NDP government has plunged into is warping space and time. The other possibility is that a desperate Prime Minister down in the polls will steal any idea he can to save his tired, worn-out socialist coalition. It might be a tired cliché, but if imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, Bill C-56 might just be a Liberal love letter to the Conservative Party. The Liberals think if they can walk like Conservatives and talk like Conservatives, maybe they'll poll like Conservatives. This bill is what the internet likes to call copy pasta. It refers to any text-based meme copied and shared on the internet, what people born in the last century used to recall quotes. The bill copies and pastes text from the member of Bay of Quinty's private member's bill on competition reform into this legislation. The bill also copies and pastes the policy of the leader of Her Majesty's official opposition to eliminate GST on purpose built rental housing. Yet even when this NDP Liberal government takes a break from bankrupting the country to pass conservative legislation, it does so in the most deceptive way possible. They're calling this bill the Affordable Housing and Groceries Act. Back in the days when Canada had a strong, stable economy and a strong, stable Conservative Prime Minister, the Liberals used to complain constantly about our approach to naming legislation with obvious political messaging. The Liberal member for Winnipeg North rose 22 times to complain about the presence of a single word in a short title. Mm. And since we're debating copy pasta legislation, I'm just going to borrow four sentences from the member from Winnipeg North when he sat on this side of the House. One of the biggest issues I have with the Liberal government is the type of propaganda and political spin it puts on the legislation it brings to the House of Commons. We see yet again this with Bill with C-56. Uh, the Government of Canada and the Prime Minister are trying to give the impression that if we pass this legislation, there will be affordable groceries. If the Liberals were honest with Canadians, which is a rarity with this government, they'd acknowledge that achieving affordable groceries is not just as easy as saying it in the title of the bill than having 338 members of Parliament voting in favour of the legislation. Mr. Speaker, uh, the actual bill the member for Winnipeg North was referring to was the Drug-Free Prisons Act. The bill specifically addressed the issue of drugs in our prisons. He said uh, our Conservative government was trying to give the impression that passing this would mean prisons were drug-free. Any reasonable Canadian could look at the bill and say, yes, the Conservative government wants prisons to be drug-free. It wasn't called the 100% Drug-Free Prison Act. It wasn't called the Totally Drug-Free Prison Act. It was just the Drug-Free Prison Act. Yet that was enough for the Liberals to accuse us of misleading Canadians. The hypocrisy of the Liberal Party truly knows no limit. For Liberals to call this the Affordable Housing and Groceries Act is a slap in the face to every single Canadian struggling with the cost of living. Canadians are struggling to afford food, and this government is trying to gaslight them into thinking this legislation will somehow undo the grocery court cartels. This bill will only address threats to competition from mergers going forward. That's an important change to make in a country that suffers from a lack of competition in banking, transportation and telecommunications, not coincidentally all federally regulated industries. The NDP Liberal government knows this legislation will have zero impact on food prices, yet they call it the affordable, uh, the, um, affordable Housing and Groceries Act. That is pure propaganda, and it's insulting. But Canadians are not stupid. They can clearly see the NDP Liberal government's real grocery policy is higher prices. Every Canadian knows this is the official policy of the Liberal Party, to increase the cost of energy. It's their uh, policy to increase prices on everything. Everything made using energy. Everything shipped using energy, 
everything grown using energy. The, that is the purpose of the carbon tax. That is the purpose of the costly fuel regulations. That is the purpose of the blackout electricity re regulations. And together, these represent a triple threat to affordable food prices. Nipissing Pembroke, but there's a member from St. Catharines is rising on a point of order. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I, I know we've been hearing a lot about the price on pollution in debate today, but uh, when I got up, I know the Conservatives are very eager to keep us on track with the bill, and we're wavering on relevancy here, Mr. Speaker. As loud as the Honourable Member yells, she needs to get back to the bill. Relevance is always important, but uh, the member from Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke, uh, uh, appears to me to be uh, on, on message. Uh, I will refer, return the floor to the member from Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke. And that's the purpose of the blackout electricity regulations. Together, these policies represent a triple threat to affordable food prices. But that wasn't enough for the proudly socialist coalition. They weren't happy enough with Canadians sucking up bad policies through paper straws. That's why the Minister for Communist China's Environment is using a pollution prevention order to ban plastic food packaging. The Liberals aren't passing legislation. They're not even using regulation. They are issuing an order under the Environmental Protection Act. The government was given extraordinary power by Parliament to protect the environment from actual danger. Past orders included requiring dentists to prevent mercury getting into the environment when disposing of dental amalgams. It, it was never meant to take recyclable food containers off store shelves. This is another obvious abuse of power, the same as when they illegally banned plastic straws. The Liberals know this sneaky policy will increase the price of food, the same way they knew imposing the carbon tax and the costly fuel regulations would hammer Atlantic Canada especially hard. They knew it, and they did it anyhow. They knew their policies would make life unaffordable. They knew making energy would make uh, more expensive and make, would make food more expensive. They knew it, but they don't care about Canadians struggling with the cost of living. Their ideological obsession has morphed into a religious obsession. The Church of Climate Socialism believes we must repent for the sin of capitalism or else we'll face a climate apocalypse. Anyone who dissents from the socialism, it, climate socialism is branded a heretic. They need this deep faith in their own righteousness to justify themselves that it's okay to call this an affordability affordable grocery bill when it has nothing to do with grocery prices. Yeah. As I said from the start, the contents of this bill were lifted from conservative bills. Conservative bill, conservatives put forward positive policies. We look forward to seeing how they can be improved in committee. The government could have chosen plenty of positive sounding political titles to market this bill. Instead, the Prime Minister made the decision to gaslight Canadians. He'll fly around the country dumping tons of carbon into the atmosphere, claiming he has an affordable grocery bill that proves he's not completely out of touch. Meanwhile, the environment minister, that unrepentant vandal who once attacked the home of Ralph Klein and terrorized his wife, seeks to increase the cost of food with more plastic bans. And not only is this plastic packaging ban lead to higher prices, it'll also reduce competition. This would be like Harper introducing drug-free prison act while Peter McKay and Jason Kenney went around handing out crack pipes uh, to convicts. I, I can just imagine the member for Winnipeg North would have had to say about that. Mr. Speaker, let's get this bill to committee. And even though this bill has been plagiarized from conservative bills, we have to go over it with a fine-tooth comb. We know the Liberals like to copy and paste things into legislation. We know it because they tried to ban 
they did it when they tried to ban hunting rifles. It was riddled with the kind of typographical errors that come from copying and pasting text between different types of documents. That liberals are lazy and lackadaisical about legislation is not a surprise to lawful firearms owners. But after eight years, you would have thought they'd be making fewer errors with experience. The truth is they are tired and worn out. That's why we've seen a steady march of senior Liberal staffers out of government and into senior lobbying positions. The smart ones fleeing a sinking ship. The desperate ones trying to bail it out. The bad ones claim the ship isn't sinking. These Liberals claim the ship is flying full of affordable food. Canadians will pay a heavy price for Liberal delusions. This Prime Minister is not worth the cost. I see, uh, I see the member from Calgary Rocky Ridge rising on a point of order. Yes, well, to that, to that point, um, there seemed to be such enthusiasm in the House for the uh, member's uh, speech. I wonder if there's unanimous consent to give her a few more minutes if she has any more uh, time. Yes. Yes. All those opposed to the honourable member moving the motion will please say nay. Nay. There is not unanimous consent. <laughs> 